The Honda Transalp is a legendary motorcycle that has captivated adventure riders for over three decades. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the history of this iconic bike and explore its evolution over the years. Back in the 80s, motorcycle engines came as big and as powerful as people could make them. Adventure touring was more a sport of customization. Many riders made their bikes more suitable for long-distance traveling. In this environment, Honda first released the Transalp, a bike with off-road pretensions but also on-road behavior. Not too heavy, not too light featured. Just the right balance for a lot of time in the saddle, both on the highways and on dirt and rocky roads. At that time, Honda called the Transalp a new concept touring bike. It wasn't entirely new, but it was newer than it is now. Before the Transalp, we had already seen a few bikes suitable for on- and off-road touring, like the BMW R80 GS or the Yamaha XT600Z Tenere. Honda introduced the first Transalp in 1986 with a 583cc V-twin engine, and Honda only brought it to the United States in 1989, after three years. The Honda Transalp was born as a dual-sport motorcycle designed for both on- and off-road adventures. It was named after the Transalpine region in Europe, which was known for its rugged terrain and scenic landscapes. The first-generation Transalp was powered by a 583cc V-twin engine that produced 50 horsepower and 39 pound-feet of torque. It was praised for its nimble handling and comfortable ride, making it as a favorite among adventure riders. Let's speak about the first models from the first generation of Transalp, the XL600V. We have from 1987 up to 1990. We have uh, this kind of look. From 1991 up to 1993, this uh, rally touring Honda Transalp. Then we have another facelift, 1994-1996, check out this one. And one of the last of its uh, first generation, 1997 from 1999. In 1991, Honda gave to the Transalp a new dashboard, then revised the look of the Transalp for 1994, give it a more modern fairing and they added a second disc brake for 1997. The original Transalp sold very well, they were very popular in Europe and we can still see many of this generation on our average European city street. They don't die, they are comfortable, they are powerful enough unless you ask too much of it and they are useful everywhere. What we can observe for the first generation of Transalp that during time some of the specifications uh, vary. We're speaking about the uh, variation on overall width. Also, the ground clearance vary. They started with 225 millimeters, then it has decreased until 195 millimeters. Also, the weight has modified quite a lot. 175 kilos, then 189, 183 kilos. And uh, we're speaking about both dry weight and curb weight. The bike was basically sold in Europe, Japan and North America. 
In 1987, the Motorcycle International considered the Transalp a good motorcycle, not an excellent one, but good all the same. It comes closest of any bike so far to being a true all-arounder, but it still had some very annoying faults. The high-speed vibrations, the lack of luggage carrying capacity, a feeble headlight beam and an engine that's fiddly to work on. But these are more than overshadowed by the overall excellence of its engine, fairing, suspension and handling. In this time frame we need to stop for a bit and speak about the Honda XL 400V Transalp which was built from 1991 up to 1996. Concurrently with the XL600V, Honda sold the XL400V Transalp, primarily for the Japanese market due to licensing and registration benefits for under 400cc motorcycles. The XL400V has a 390cc V-twin engine that makes 26 kW and 37 horsepower at peak. It's the same engine under the Honda Brost 400 and Honda Shadow 400. Despite the XL400V's lower power and lower spec and the single disc brake, it was quite popular when it sold and is now a popular bike for export to some markets as it's cheap, versatile and reliable. Some sources say that this bike was sold starting from 1991 but other sources say that this bike was sold even from 1987. Please leave a comment if you know exactly from which year this bike was actually starting to be sold. Now let's proceed to the second generation of Transalp, which was called the Transalp XL650V, starting from year 2000 up to year 2007. Honda released the second generation Transalp in 2000 with a 647cc V-twin engine, a bigger engine from a bigger bore plus a facelift. The Transalp XL650V is the same basic bike as the trailing end of the first generation, a simple do-everything bike with an engine powerful enough but not overwhelmingly power. It kept the 21-inch front tire. But Honda revised the looks again for the XL650V. People didn't really like the looks of the early first generation. This second generation Transalp starting from 2000 it is wider, higher and heavier and is certainly not inferior in size to the large BMW GS. The weight of the Transalp has increased over time, from 175 kilos from the first models to 218 kilos for the latest version. The people were complaining about the quality of previous model because from 1997 the factory moved from Japan to Italy. Anyone who scans a lot of Google will come across some criticism about the quality of paint, electricity and again the wheels. But this time the rims aren't the culprit, it's the spokes that come loose. We're speaking about the 1997 to 1999 model version. And starting from 2000, as mentioned before, the bike seems to have increased in quality. The exhaust bends are now made of stainless steel and the spokes and rims don't fall apart. However, you immediately notice that the engine is more focused on the road than on the off-road. Now let's watch a short video from a Tessa factory in Italy. We can actually see how the workers are taking care and assembly the Honda Transalp starting from year 2000-2001. Thank you. 
Valkyrie is uh, part of the tank from the Honda Transalp, the second generation, starting from year 2000. And the fairings. Actually, we can notice that the plastics are more thick than nowadays, or it's just an impression. Please leave a comment regarding the plastic quality if you own such a Transalp. Here we can see the last part of the assembling process. The lights are tested, the horn. And after this process is finished, uh, at the end we have the dynamic tests. It's very nice to see this footage from uh, more than 20 years ago. Let's get back a little bit to the graphics and check out the numbers if we compare the versions. Now we are at the second generation with a bigger engine, a bigger bore, the same stroke. We have a slightly increase of power, not much, 39 kilowatts and 52 horsepower at 7500 RPMs. We having a little bit more power with the lower RPMs. The torque has uh, barely stayed the same, but we have a better suspension travel, at least for the front, and the lower suspension travel if we're referring to the rear suspension. The wheel sizes are the same, and we're speaking now about 212 kilos or 467 pounds. The weight has increased with about 7 kilos. The XLV600 Transalp had managed 14 years in production with only slight modifications. But in 2001, Honda finally gave its middleweight dual sport bike a makeover. The 583cc V-twin engine of the 600 was bored out to a larger 647cc version. And the bodywork was restyled. 
On the move, the update hasn't made a huge difference to the Transalp's performance. The engine is dated and overwhelming. The chassis offers safe, predictable, if rather soft handling. The long travel suspension gives a plush ride. And the dual seat is spacious and well appointed, making the Transalp a decent light tourer. People, they were somehow complaining about the new restyled Transalp. It was heavy and unusually for a trailie, it was very difficult to strap down securely. Every bump saw it wallow on the soft suspension, tie down straps flapping alarmingly. The people were considering the bike ugly. The second generation Transalp was extremely easy to ride. Flittering through traffic was very easy, while the excellent mirrors, they did a great job. The engine was considered old, actually prehistoric, being blessed with a pair of carburetors and three valves with just one overheat cam per cylinder. The exhaust was nice, exiting in a stacked pair of pipes on the right, looking far more business-like than is really warranted. The clutch was light and positive and the gearbox was typically slick. Throttle action is light and the carburation is spot-on, with no glitches or hiccups at all. This bike had a choke, the choke was situated below the tank on the left side. In Europe the Transalp was very very popular and it was very very accessible. At that time the Transalp was considered a very difficult bike to dislike. The styling were unlikely to win any awards, stopped grating after a short time and the effective fairing and screen were there, welcome to the weather turn a little nasty. The smooth and admirable engine was easy to live with and the handling was better than expected. But Transalp was also a rather difficult bike to like as well. It certainly did nothing wrong, but it was rather a dull bike. It's also cheap, at just over 5 grand on the road. We're getting to the third generation of Transalp, the Transalp 700V, starting from 2008 up to 2012. The bike looks very nice, especially in white, red and blue, but Honda went a little bit too far with making the XL700V into an everyday commuter, which is a great, but which is against the spirit of the earlier models. Essentially, Honda turned the XL700V into a competitor for the Suzuki Vistrom of the day. They increased the engine capacity, gave it optional ABS, a popular option by the way, and reduced the front tire size from 21 inch to 19 inches, acknowledging that this was being used as a road-going bike. Honda also gave the Transalp a fuel-injected engine, which is more welcome change if you are even had to deal with the leaking of gunk-up carburetors. Anyway, Honda sold the revised Transalp for a few years, but killed it off due to poor sales. It does have legions of fans and it's great to do everything bike, just not as adventurous as the ones that came before it or after it. 
For this XL700 V, the tank capacity also decreases from 19 to 17.5 liters according to Honda because this version will be a bit more economical with gasoline. This Transalt version is completely different from all previous versions, not only in appearance but also because the injection system instead of honest carburetors. From 2008 up to 2011, the bike had different uh, code names, code for the frame, code for the bike. We have uh, XL700 V8, we have XL700 V89, depending if the bike had or not the ABS, because ABS was optional. In terms of specifications, we have uh, slightly different numbers over here. Let's refer to the curb wet weight, which was uh, 214 kilos or 2019 kilos, depending if the bike had or not the ABS. We have a front suspension 41 millimeter telescopic fork with the only 177 millimeter suspension travel. The rear has 173 millimeter suspension travel. It was adjustable for preload and rebound, only the rear suspension. The front tire size was 19 inch for the front and 17 inch for the rear. Double disc 256 millimeter, five speed transmission, and let's take a look at the design, which I think it's quite nice. I have to say it's one of the nicest. Here is the bike with some accessories mounted. But let's face it, this bike was a more on-road orientated bike. When we see the ground clearance, the suspension travel, it's way far from its uh, predecessors, especially from the first generation. But this didn't stop the riders for taking this bike uh, on a trails and on gravel roads, off-roads. Honda has prepared the notorious Transalt for 2009 as part of their plans to continue the long career of this average displacement enduro bike, but only added anti-lock brakes and painted it in the colors of the first Transalt model. Already famous thanks to its bulletproof engine and the awesome riding experience that it offers both on paved roads and off them, the Honda XL700 V Transalt needs no presentations whatsoever. What is unknown on this model is the C-ABS anti-lock brakes that are meant to provide the best of braking performance on all riding surfaces that the bike is made to be exploited on. Honda added the new braking system on most bikes in the 2009 lineup and this legend simply couldn't be missed. Featuring an aggressive and futuristic design, the Transalt practically defines through its looks the idea of adventure in motorcycling, meaning no barriers in a rider's quest. And the liquid-cooled and electronically fuel-injected 680cc V-twin 4-valve engine is there to back up the inviting design and never leave room for the rider to wish another kind of riding experience. This is the impressive result of the V-twin engine type which managed to find its way on this dual sport motorcycle in 1987 together with the first Transalp. Motor day at that time mean requirements so the new Honda has to comply with Euro 3 regulations and feature a very efficient catalytic device. Also, Honda offers a range of accessories which allow you to personalize the 2009 model year like never before. The new bike's mid-range is certainly stronger, but the big improvement is in induction. Honda seems to have conquered the jerkiness that affects most fuel injection system and small throttle openings. The new Transalt will pick up smoothly from 2750 RPM so it can be used as a balance if bulky commuter. Throttle response is in fact good throughout the rev range. There's no power band as such, but the engine becomes more energic and noticeably vibrations above 6500 RPM. The suspension of the 2001 Transalt was supple and well damped, ideal for the back road tourer if not for a sports bike. The Transalp is also at home on gravel, even though it has a smaller front wheel size than its predecessor. The new fairing was a surprise on several levels. Honda's claimed it's smaller than the 650, well it's wider at its crucial 1.5 meter level, roof weight for most cars, very important in traffic, but considerably slimmer above that. Honda also deliberately sacrificed some protection for smoother airflow. 
The styling is also more coherent and the graphics, which Honda says they are intended to evoke the readout of the GPS navigation system, are bright and distinct with, without being too plastic. The new instrument panel is generically digital with an analog ref counter. There are numbers for time, speed and distance and a bar graph for fuel. The white flat seat is very deeply padded and supportive as a commode cushion and very comfortable once you're on the move. The bike was built in the Montesa plant near Barcelona. The build quality from the Montesa plant near Barcelona is impressive and the Transalp has a well-deserved reputation for durability. The XL700V is a great round tourer, despite the wide bodywork, but it's even better on the back roads taking you to places for few people go. And after 10 years, in 2022, Honda announced the latest XL750 Transalp at the ECMA motorcycle show. And this time they were not just competing with the Vistrom 650, though they are competing with a simultaneously announced Suzuki Vistrom 800D. They are also competing with the Yamaha Tenere 700, the KTM 890 Adventure R, the Aprilia Touareg 660 and the whole range range of middleweight adventure bikes that are taking the market by storm. You might just notice that the 2023 Transalp doesn't have a V at the end of its name, it just XL750. That's because the engine is now a parallel twin, it does have a 270 degree crank though, so it fires in the same order as a 90 degree V twin and in theory should make the same sound. As we all know from my previous videos, I'm an owner of the new Transalp 750. I'm really grateful that I'm able to own such a bike as the Honda Transalp 750 and we'll just have to wait and see if this bike proves its reliability and rise up to its expectations. I will gladly show my experiences with the Honda Transalp on the Ideal Bike YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe for more feedback and videos regarding the new Honda Transalp 750. Around town or around the world, Honda's brand new XL750 Transalt carries the adventure forward from the iconic original, ready for a fresh generation of riders looking to travel wherever the road leads. Its 8 volt parallel twin cylinder engine delivers 67.5 kilowatts and 75 newton meters, throttled by wire, 5 level Honda selectable torque control with integrated wheelie control, and 3 levels of engine braking and power. The premium specification includes 5-inch color TFT instrument display with Honda Smart Voice Control, full LED lightning, auto indicator cancel and emergency stop signals technology. The adventure segment has expanded massively since the Transalp first turned the wheel. If we're placing the Transalp in this modern competition, we have to realize that there is even a competition inside the Honda models. NX 500, we have the NC750X, we have the CRF1100L or the CRF300L, plenty of adventure options in the Honda motorcycle offer. And all these bikes are very different, but because they are all somehow called adventure, they are all worth considering as alternatives to the Honda Transalp. And now we have the Transalp placed between the CRF 300L Rally or the new NX500 and the Africa Twin. And we have here some specs just to clarify that placement in between those bikes. 
If back in 1886 the competition was not so hard for the Transalp, you can check out the models which Transalp is competing today and we're speaking about other brands than Honda. Today the Honda Transalp continues to be a beloved adventure bike for riders all over the world. Its combination of comfort, performance and versatility make it an ideal choice for long distance touring and off-road adventures. Whether you're exploring rugged terrain or cruising down the highway, the Honda Transalp is a reliable and capable companion that will take you wherever you want to go. From its humble beginnings in 1986 to its latest incarnation, the Transalp has been a beloved adventure bike for all over these decades. There are several reasons why people love the Honda Transalp motorcycle. One of the primary reasons it is versatility. The Transalp was designed as a dual sport motorcycle, which means it was capable of both on-road and off-road riding. This made it a popular choice for adventure riders who wanted a bike that could handle a variety of different terrain and road conditions. The Transalp was also prized for its reliability and durability. Honda has a reputation for producing high-quality, dependable motorcycles and the Transalp was no exception. It was known for its robust build quality and low maintenance requirements, making it a popular choice for long-distance touring and adventure riding. Another factor that contributed to the popularity of the Transalp was its comfortable riding position. Overall, the Honda Transalp was a popular motorcycle because it offered a unique combination of versatility, reliability, comfort and performance. It was a bike that could handle a variety of different riding conditions. I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any further comments, don't forget to leave it in the comment section down below.